If you're looking for a really good thermal imaging camera with many features that's only a fraction of the cost of a Fluke or FLIR, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video. About three and a half years ago, I showed you this affordable infrared thermal imager. It's the same one that I've used in many of my videos, and it still works just fine to this day. It does happen to be a lower cost thermal imager, so the sensitivity isn't very high, and the number of imaging pixels is low. The new UNI-T UTI-260B professional thermal imager that you see right here totally blows away the older thermal imager. This one here has incredible imaging quality and many great features. I happen to have several UNI-T products and I can tell you that I'm extremely happy with all of them. The first thing I'd like to do is go over the differences between my older imager and the new one. After that's done, I'm going to power this up and we're going to go over all of the settings. And lastly, I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between the two units. And you'll see very easily the difference in quality between the older unit and the newer one. The HTO2 thermal imager has a 2.4 inch color display and the UNI-T has a 2.8 inch. Thermal imaging resolution for the HTO2 is 60 by 60, which is not very much and the total imaging pixels is 3600. For the UTI 260B, the thermal imaging resolution is 256 by 192 or 49,152 pixels. So that's a very large number compared to the HTO2. Viewing area for this imager is 20 degrees, so 20 degrees vertical and 20 degrees horizontal. And for this one over here, it's 56 degrees horizontal and 42 degrees vertical. The HTO2 has a temperature measuring range between minus 20 C and 300 C or minus 4F and 572 degrees Fahrenheit. The UNI-T has a measuring range between minus 15 C and 550 C, so 5 degrees Fahrenheit and just over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit so a big increase in the ability to measure temperature. The measuring accuracy for temperature for both of these units is plus or minus two degrees Celsius. Image frequency for the HTO2 is eight hertz, and for this one over here, 25 hertz. Emissivity, which is how well an object emits infrared energy. For this unit here, it's adjustable between 0.1 and one, and the same applies for this one. The HTO2 and the UNI-T both have fixed focusing. This unit here has four different color palettes and the UNI-T has seven. Both units can adjust the temperature to degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. This one I think has more languages, but this one over here does Chinese and English only. Both imagers have auto shutdown. This one has a five minute, 10 minute, and 30 minute auto shutdown. The HTO2 has three measuring points and this one here has a center measuring point as well as three additional. When it comes to weight, this one here is much lighter than the newer one. This is 345 grams. This one here is 500. The power supply for the HTO2 uses four AA batteries. And for the UNI-T, there's an internal lithium ion 26650 cell that's rated five amp hours. Both of these units can be mounted to a tripod. There's a threaded brass insert on the bottom of each unit. The older unit is not designed to be water resistant in any way, but this one here made by UNI-T has an IP65 rating, so the UNI-T can easily withstand rain or low pressure jets of water. It's not going to enter the unit to cause any problems. Both units are drop tested at two meters or just over six feet. Because the HTO2 uses the alkaline batteries, it's not going to last nearly as long as the UNI-T. The UNI-T has between a five and six hour runtime, and when you go to charge it using the included USB Type-C cable, it takes around five hours if the battery has been fully depleted. A very good feature that this one has that this one does not have, this one allows you to watch in real time exactly what's going on on the screen right here. So at the top of this, we'll spin this around. Inside here is where the memory card goes and it does include a 16 gigabyte memory card. And the spot where you plug in the charger goes right here in the USB type C port. This one over here, just a spot to plug in the card. This cable is used for two purposes. One to charge the internal lithium ion cell 
and the other purpose is to connect this to your computer as a USB disk or a USB camera. Now if you connect this up as a USB camera, what you're going to be able to do is whatever you're seeing on this display can be displayed on a computer monitor in real time. So you're going to have real time image transmission directly from the unit. Some computers will have generic drivers installed for this camera. If your computer doesn't recognize this, then you can use Unity's analyzer software. And I'm pretty sure you can find that online. I'll see if I can find a link and post it in the video description area. Now let's take a closer look at the Unity. Also included, you get the instruction manual. There's a warranty card. It's in Chinese, of course. One year. Also included, like I just said, is a 16 gigabyte SD micro. The grip is very comfortable. Over here is your visual camera, above it is your infrared camera, and at the very top is an LED flashlight. It works well, it's not super bright, but if you're in a dark area, it's going to be extremely useful. To power this unit up, you're gonna push and hold, and then it's going to take a minute to initialize. And you can see initializing. Over here you can set your date and time, there's the battery strength, and over here it's showing your maximum temperature for the entire area that's being viewed. Over here is the lowest temperature, and at the top is the highest. Now over here is your flashlight button, so if I push this, let's flip this around, there's the flashlight. To get to the different settings you push set, down here it says measurement, you can push set again, and now it's giving you different options, a high-low spot, center spot. So I push center spot, now you can see the center target that showed up. It's going to give you right up here at the top, the reading at the center. Turn it back off. I have it on high and low, and at the very bottom it's region of interest. So only in that area you're going to be getting the temperature readings within that green box. So let me turn this back off, go back to the way I had it, back, one to the right, color palettes. So here's all your different color palettes that you can choose. I like to leave it on the one that says iron. Now let's go back, over here, point temperature. See now you could choose to add extra points. I could put that one on. See it just added in the middle. Push, yeah, push set. Push it again. Go down here. I can add an additional point. And you can move the points around. So if you have this on a tripod and it's looking at an engine or some electronic device and you only want to get temperature readings at certain points, you're going to be able to do that with this unit. Now you want to go over to here and this is the image mode. This is gonna let you choose how the imager works. So right now it's on thermal only. This one here is a digital camera. It's 640 by 480. Scroll down again, now it's Fusion. What Fusion does, it takes the thermal imaging and combines it with the visual camera so you can see exactly what you're looking at along with the thermal imaging. Picture in picture. And over here you can align what happens with the older unit you could have a problem where the visual camera does not line up with the thermal imaging camera so it looks like it's double vision and over here you can align everything and over here you can see at the bottom there's a meter so you can align things and let's go back let's do one more time and then we're going to go into the settings English and Chinese only date and time, 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock, you just hit set, up and down, enter, go back, temperature units, Fahrenheit or Celsius, high low alerts. So the unit could be set to give you alerts if it exceeds a certain temperature or goes below a certain temperature. Temperature scale, low gain or high gain, you have a choice. I leave it on high. 
Display brightness is on medium to save the battery, but you do have low and high. Auto power off, 5, 10, 30, or you could leave it off if you want. USB mode, there's your selection for USB disk if you just want to take the files off the camera, or if you want to connect it to a computer and watch in real time exactly what you see on the screen, you would select USB camera. Measurements, emissivity. Now emissivity is very important. Certain objects that are not reflective, you're going to want to have that set very high. And objects that are reflective or shiny, you want to bring this number way down. And right over here is a chart that you can see explaining the different settings for emissivity. There's our ambient temp. Let's go back here. System settings, device information, shows you the memory card, how much is free, format, autosave, and that is it. It's not a difficult unit to use. To save an image, you would simply squeeze the trigger. It's going to ask you if you'd like to save it. You could select yes or squeeze the trigger. When you're finished, to review, you just push the play button and everything is right there. You can go to the one you want to see. If you want to download, connect it up to your computer and you'll be able to analyze the images much more closely. Okay, now let me show you the comparison between the quality of the images on this unit and the older unit. As you're comparing the image resolution between the two cameras, try not to concentrate on the temperature readings too much because the pointer was not in the correct area as I was doing the test. It may not be a Fahrenheit reading, it might be a Celsius reading. So just concentrate on the image resolution. With the images right here, the top left is an engine that was cooling down after about an hour. And you can see the center image using the UNI-T. Very clear display, high resolution. And the image at the top right is from the older unit. You can see it displays the heat in the areas but the resolution is much lower, so it lacks detail. The lower left, you can see an electrical panel, and in the center, you can see the UNI-T, how clearly everything is, and at the bottom right, using the older thermal imaging camera, you can see the two heavy conductors coming down, and you can also see an area of heat where the circuit breakers are at the top part of the panel. In this group of images, the upper left-hand corner, we're going to be concentrating on the AC vent, and you can see the UNI-T displays the vent very clearly, but it also has such a high level of sensitivity that you can even see the location of the trusses behind the sheetrock. You can see the faint lines running left and right. The top right, you can see with the old camera, it shows the vent very clearly, but of course the resolution is much lower. The lower left image, you can see the cat sitting by the doorway, how clear it is with the UNI-T, and to the far right, the cat, you can make out just part of the head and some of the cat's leg. In order for the cat's image to be better using the older camera, the camera would have to be much closer to the cat. In this group of images, you can see my hand at the top left, the thermal image from the UNI-T in the center at the top, and the top right corner is using the old thermal imager. Not a bad image, but the resolution is still nothing like the UNI-T. And the lower left hand image is Rose. You can see what she looks like using the UNI-T and the image taken of Rose using the HTO2, much lower resolution, but you can still make out that it's a person. For the last group of images, these were taken at night. So the upper left hand corner is an AC condensing unit. You can see using the UNI-T how clear the image is, but when viewing the exact same image using the HTO2, it only shows up the hotter areas of the condensing unit. The third image from the left at the top is a utility pole transformer. You can see the UNI-T very clearly with the wires. And right next to it is the image taken using the HTO2. You can still make out the transformer, but all of the edges of the image appear a little bit fuzzy because of the lower resolution. And at the very bottom, you can see the high level of sensitivity using the UNI-T. After walking across a tile floor, you can see the footprints that were left behind. I must say the price for this unit is definitely right because you're getting a high level of sensitivity, very good image quality, and you're only paying a fraction of the cost of much more expensive thermal imagers. I hope you enjoyed this video.